unfortunately guys Albion Online is dying, the mechanics of this game is not welcoming to the new players, Albion Online has no good feature right now for solo play. Hey there guys, Dr. Robert is here. As you can see, Alvin Online just posted a new video on the YouTube channel. They are just introducing the new update, which is called Foundation. Like the other update they just launched two months ago. It's more uh, about the Guild Warfare, uh, the Territory Warfare, Territory Defenses, and something like this. Unfortunately, guys, Albion Online is dying uh, for many reasons. And we will watch this video in the middle of the video i will tell you my opinion on why albion online is dying and what the devs are doing wrong in my opinion okay let's watch this video i love the interview as always hello and well and i'm sorry guys i will pause many times maybe and i will talk about uh features they're adding individually and tell you my opinion so just excuse me about their pauses and let's go now now welcome again to another albion online dev talk the dust has barely settled from the crystal raiders update we launched at the beginning of 2024 and now less than two months I later love this. It's, beautiful. it's already time to introduce the next update Albion's new update schedule is quite a change of pace, but we are very excited to keep pushing forward and we can't wait to share what's coming next. Before we get to that, however, I want to talk about the previous update for a moment. Okay. In Crystal Raiders, we introduced... The previous update was a mess, I think. I can say that. That was not a good one. ...used new guild season rewards, territory raiding, new territory control and hideout attack costs, a daily might bonus, and more. We've been monitoring the impact of these changes and have observed increased Outlands activity and a higher diversity of guilds active in the Outlands, which makes us very happy. Dude, this is not true. This measurement is not true. When you are just add a new feature to the game, even new players will just try to make a small guild and try it out. So if you just add a new feature to the... Uh, I don't know, guild PvP mechanics and outlands and territories, for sure many guilds will try to get into it, I don't know, just fight for the prizes. But in two months, you cannot say if your update is a success or not. So you should just wait for maybe six months, even a year, to just tell that if this update is a success or not. Uh, just look at Corrupted Dungeon in this state. Corrupted Dungeons suck. You know, they are so bad. You know, the metas are awful. The PvE system and PvE experience is awful. The PvP experience is even more awful. But, you know, we have no choice. Look at Mist now. It, it was great. The Mist experience at early stages were great. But now, they are sucks. They added the Awakening system and now... Mists are full of awakened weapon and it sucks. The the high mobility awakened weapon are ruining the mist. SPI is not doing anything about that and he's just adding some random things to the maybe I don't know guild wipers, territory fighting, I don't know. Let's go and continue. At the same time, seeing raiding in action confirmed what we suspected all along. Defending from raids is difficult, in particular for smaller guilds. And this is exactly where Albion's next update comes in. Albion's next major update, launching before the start of the next season, will be called Foundations. And it will contain a major overhaul of territories, adding the option of upgrading your territory defenses into mighty fortifications and gaining additional benefits from territory control. How you can say that is this is mighty fortification? Mighty Look fortifications and gain. You're just upgrading the appearance of the walls. You just just make it. It was meaning additional. Like upgrading wooden, your territory and now defenses. The in third upgrade is just stone. Okay, I'm not a guild player, but this is not a mighty fortification. Adding the option of upgrading there your territory no defenses into mighty fortifications levels, as you can see. and gaining additional benefits from territory control. The, just the looks of that are ch is changing. Maybe the HP of these foundations Key fortifications are changing. And gaining additional benefits from territory control. 
guilds will be yeah, able to build they... and improve fortified walls and gates Eight in territories, the which will then walls. hold attackers at bay during raid or territory conquest battles. Dude, you can add some automatic uh, defense system for the territories. Other than uh, the guards, you can just add something like Clash of Clans. You just <coughs> should make the defensing system so much more fluid. Like, you know, like Clash of Clans, add some mortars, add some uh, maybe air defenses, I don't know, add some turrets, which are automated, I don't know, maybe AI controlling them, or maybe manually, I don't know, a player just uh, go uh, and control that, I don't know, defense system, mortar, or I don't know, uh, flamethrower, something like this, man, you know? Why you don't add these? Where is the diversity? You should just spend money and upgrade your wall, and that's it. And that's it. Where is that? Different tiers of wall mean a harder time to break through them and more time for the defenders to rally their forces and rain down death on the attackers from the safety of their walled territory. Territory. Okay, as always, the, the territory attack and defense will be just pressing Q, W, and E's and nothing, you know, nothing else. Guards will also be reworked and guilds will be able to upgrade these to unlock new guard abilities and aid in the territory defense. That might be good. It's like something like Palvor is doing. You can just, uh, I don't know, change the formation of the pals in your territory and upgrade their abilities. But maybe it's a good step to toward this system, but it's not complete enough. There are many reasons why we think fortifications will be a great addition for the game. The upgrade process, which largely costs stone, will help the ailing stone economy. And the guards and walls will be a significant aid when trying to hold off raiders and territory attackers. This is great. This is actually great. This store, uh, the stone gathering is in a bad situation right now. It has been in a bad situation. I think it's it's been two years that uh, stone gatherers are just crying for help and this guy finally is trying to do something about them and the guards maybe yeah they add diversity to pve system of the pve aspect of the territory raiding but it is not enough uh, they they can add more and more features i think faster maybe be creative make more features uh, add different aspects to the game they are completely forgetting about pve potential of this game and they are just focusing on pvp i know that this game is all about pvp but now every game should has every game should have this aspect pve aspect because there are not so many players that are uh, willing to engage in a pvp system which is group based many of them just love to chill in a dungeon or maybe even a group-based PvP system, which is implementing some PvE aspects, will be good and great. Like, you know, maybe you can just bring some soldier with yourself and just invade the territory. A AI-controlled soldier, or I don't know. When you are just uh, using a guard, maybe make some formations for them. Like strategy games, like a stronghold, or I don't know, banner lord, or something like this. Most importantly, though... Fortifications mean that no two territory fights should play out the same, as your strategies and... No, that's not right. Most of them, most of the time, that would be the same, I think. Uh, yeah. Tactics will depend on the choices the defender made during the upgrade process. It is up to them to choose which upgrades to prioritize, as you can't simply upgrade the entire fortification at once. Most of the guilds which are just controlling the territories and they can uh, obtain the needs and um, the player base to control that territory are rich enough, I think, to just upgrade their territories to the max level uh, in a quite low amount of time. So, uh, I don't know. Defenses will reset when a territory gets conquered and at the end of the season. This should lead to more varied territory raiding and battle experience. And we're very excited to expand upon that system with more choices for attackers and... This is great. More choices. It's always great for attackers and defenders in the future. That's great. Defenders in the future.
All in all, the Foundations update will lay the, well, foundations for adding true siege battles to Albion Online. To add additional justification to spending resources on upgrading your defenses, the value of territories will improve to include a daily reward chest. The contents of this chest are generated based on the player activity in the local and neighboring clusters. So controlling a territory with plenty of high value player activity is key to maximizing this reward. Okay, this is good. This is really good. I can say that, you know, add different aspects to PV, to group based PVP system and even PVE system. So this is great. This new system encourages guilds to actively play within proximity of their own territories. But it also sure. creates an incentive for territory owners to stop attacking every player doing PVE near their territories. It might possibly even bring them to protect such players from would-be attackers. The Foundations update, of course, also brings the next batch of crystal weapons, as well as the long-awaited spectator mode for custom matches, okay, nice. which allows anyone to run and spectate their own custom match battles in Albion Online. Okay, players could this use this to this is really great for sure this is one of the best features they've added in a long time to the albion online uh these custom matches can be great for content creators to run tournaments i don't know maybe sponsored tournaments they they will they can be a prize pool something like this i don't know the the, the winner team can just win 10 millions of silver something like this not 10 million, it's so low. Maybe 100 million of silver, something like this. And I will be one of those for sure. I will just make a tournament for you guys. And we will have a prize pool in the future. And this is great. This is really great. Like two or two. But I think they should change the um, looks of ar arenas. It's not good. The, the rules, everything, they should be changed. It's so simple, you know. Uh, I, I would love to see a somehow mobile game, something like this, I don't know, uh, in these um, arenas, something like this. But the, the looks right now is so simple and I don't like it. Built their own community run tournaments. There's plenty more to talk about the update and the fortification system, but both will be covered in their own dedicated dev talk as we get closer to the release of okay. the Foundations update in April 2024. Okay, April. Before I go though, let me tell you a little about our other update plans. Beyond Spring, we want to return our focus to other features than Guild Warfare. That's great. Of course, we'll keep on improving the raiding and fortification features down the line, and new crystal weapons will continue to flow in, but we want to dedicate at least one update to general game improvements for existing features before we get into another large feature. Okay guys, that's great, but I have some words with you guys. Uh, first first of all, I just want you to just tell me in the comment section below that what do you think about the state of the game right now? Uh, do you think that Albion Online is dead or not? Just tell me in the comment section below. I would love to just read your comments about the Albion Online right now. And tell me if you like the updates right now or just they are just trash i can say let's just hear me out let's let's hear my opinion about the state of this game and um i don't know the updates that are coming up okay guys let's talk about the state of the game right now i just want to tell you that albion online really really is not in a good state as you can see the devs are not just focusing in solo play which I, I i think the solo aspect of this game is the most important aspect of this game because the most of the players will start this game solo and albion online uh, albion online has no good how you can say that uh, it's really hard to say but i I clearly can say that Albion Online has no good feature right now, no good uh, content right now for solo play. As you can see, we have two groups of players right now in Albion Online. Group players or high numbered players like 10, 15, 20, we have so many contents for them in Outlands and solo players. We have not 
really a good content right now for soul players we had uh, mists which are now full of 8.4 8.3 players which most of the time are content creators that are having fun killing low ip players uh, and they just they added awakening system they just ruined mists and even without ip cap um, it's it's really mess a new player goes into the mess and he just get killed by a blood laser which has infinite mobility even with minor boots you cannot escape from 8.4 a vacant blood laser so what, what can you do man as a solo player you will be exhausted it's not about the skill it's about the brokenness of these weapons and it, it should be controlled somehow you go to prop the dungeon as a new player and you will just have some experience in pvp which i believe crop the dungeons are the best place to learn pvp and you will get wrecked by so many meta abusers and the meta talks in crop the dungeon and there is no sense of balancedness in um, i don't know different weapons you should just play right now you should just play i don't know maybe fire staffs which are op right now in crop the dungeon um maybe daybreaker to miss a spear and, and do all sorts a new player just don't joins the game and he wants to just experience the most important aspect of this game which means pvp what can he do just tell me he should just go to crop the dungeon until we just die so easily to the meta abusers he can go to the mists which there is no matchmaking system in the mist he will die easily to 8.4 and 8.3 players he will go to the outlands he will just get ganked by 25 or 30 players i don't know where, where is the profit of that but these groups will kill everyone they see in their sight and this guy will die everywhere so he should just go into the I don't know red zone uh, yellow zone or uh, what should he do the pv aspect of this game is trash too so if we just go and kill some mobs he will be bored soon okay this game is not designed for new players this game uh, is not welcoming uh, about new players albion online and SPI should just take some approaches to um i don't know connect pve to the pvp somehow they should add some systems to this game that make pvp system more fun for new players and more rewarding i can say the this is one suggestion that they can implement to their game to uh crop the dungeon to the mists and the suggestion i have is that they should add true matchmaking system to this game the true matchmaking system for corrupted dungeon the true ma matchmaking system for mists and it will look great not ip cap to the mist please matchmaking we need matchmaking so there should be a mmr system like we have in dota 2 you cannot play as a herald in dota 2 with uh i don't know immortal player this is not fair when you just go into the mist as you have tier 4 you just joined into the pvp aspect of the game so why you should just find the 8.4 why should you just run away from an 8.4 this guy knows how to chase you i know the pvp should not completely completely be fair but you know it's not fair at all you know maybe this is fun for the content creators they just go with 8.4 and farm people but where is the fun this game should be fun it's not like tarkov like uh i don't know a uh, real life graphic game which i don't know you just see every day you will be killed cruelly it's a mmorpg it should be fun and the main problem i see here is as a solo player i cannot see a great way to connect my solo player experience to my group play experience it's just something else okay then you just introduce some group play um i don't know content into the game you should just think about that how new players want to join the group player activities 
how we can introduce a good, good way, how we can introduce new players to the group activities. We had Roads of Avalon, which meant to be for small scale fights and small groups, but they ruined it too. The chests are so bad, the loots are so bad. Okay, right now, Albion Online, I think, uh, is a bad state as I just uh, saw the analytics Albion online players are just going down and maybe they are just trying uh, so hard to just add different aspects to the game but in my opinion they are doing it wrong they are just adding some wrong features to this game they are trying and I love SPI They're, they are just doing great but I think this game is dying unfortunately uh, because the mechanics of this game is not welcoming to the new players at all yeah that's it guys uh, I will be glad if you tell me more and more about the state of this game in the comment section below and tell me what do you think about these new updates do you think that they are good or not uh, if they are I don't know uh, fun for you did you try the new features and had fun or maybe no uh, you haven't tried them at all and you're having fun at home playing maybe minecraft or something like this uh, just tell me that in the comment section below thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoy and have a great day